Today, let's talk about what's a fraction of a number? I'd like to remind you that you know a lot about fractions already. If I asked you, find a fraction of a cake, of course this is a round cake, maybe a birthday cake, who knows, and said, would you find five-eighths of this, please? I don't think anyone would have any trouble breaking this in half, half again, half again, and half again, and saying, I'm choosing five of those. No big deal, you can do that. And if I gave you a candy bar and said, find five-eighths of this, please, I think you'd know how to do that, too. You've done it a hundred times back somewhere in school. And you could choose any five. And you'd, of course, go like this. But as soon as I ask you, please find for me five-eighths of 24, many people choke up. <clears throat> Not quite sure what to do with that. Well, actually, if we keep the cake and the candy bar in mind, this is no big problem. I'm going to get a few tokens out and show you what I mean. All I do is, for my 24, I'm going to count out 24 of these. And, and here's my cloud of 24 tokens. And I'm trying to find 5 eighths of those. So, how can we do this? Well, first of all, hey, there's your cake. Let's cut this into 8 parts. Because you know your times tables, of course, 8 times 3 is 24. So, I know that if I cut these in 8 parts, there are going to be 24. Uh, of them, and those eight parts are each going to have three. So there's my cutting, and then of course I'm going to, to choose them. So I'm going to choose five of those. I could do that by sliding the five into a little place of their own and keeping the three apart. <clears throat> those are the chosen, those are the five. Five eighths of 24 then, gee, if we can put these all together, clump them together, count them up, we can see we have 15. So I can write 5 eighths of 24 equals 15. Let's do 5 sixths of 12. Same deal. Let's just do 12 tokens. And let's remember, we're treating this 6 like it's a cutter. So let's just go in here as if we have a knife and cut this. And we want six equal parts. Let's cut it up into six equal parts. Easy. I know six times two is twelve. Once I cut six, I can simply then go into a choosing mode. And I can choose five of those. I'll just choose to move them right over here. That'll be my choosing. And in choosing five of them, I realize as I clump them all together, that hey, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've just found out the answer to my question. 5, 6 of 12 equals 10. So what you're seeing right here is that every time we see something like 5 eighths, we can treat this as meaning that the bottom is a cutter. Now I know you learned in school that the bottom was called a denominator, but what the heck does denominator mean? some kind of gibberish that uh, you just learned to pare it back. But you know, denominator means cutter. So from now on, we're going to call this bottom of the fraction a cutter. And we're going to call the top of the fraction a chooser. And indeed, that top was called numerator, which when you really boil down the roots of it, it means a chooser. So we have the cutter and the chooser of a fraction. Now, let's see what happens if we use that cutter and chooser on 24. Here's 24. Let's bring 5 eighths up right next to it. And let that 8 and we're saying of 24. Let that 8 act on 24. How does it act on it? Well, of course, it explodes the 24 into 8 parts. And each of those parts is size 3. And only then, after the explosion, the cutting, we bring this 5 up here to choose any 5 at once. When those are all clumped together, we have 15. Now, one last point that I want to make. What if we were finding three-fourths of that 24? The 4 does its magic work of cutting. Cuts up the 24 into four parts. Then the 3 does its choosing. 
and we get 18. But my question is, what if we did some cutting with twice as many parts? And we had 8 as our cutter. We saw before that each one of those would be 3. We'll get how many of these threes do we need in order to have 18? Let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. We need six of them chosen to make 18. We can see that if we double the cutter, we have to double the chooser. And indeed then, 6 eighths does the same work exactly as 3 fourths. And we can say 6 eighths equals 3 fourths. And those are called equivalent fractions because they do the same work on 24. Voila. So, what have you learned? You've learned what is a fraction really? You learned it has a cutter. That's the, that's the bottom. And you learned it has a chooser that selects and chooses those pieces. Then you've learned how you find a fraction of a number. The cutter explodes that number, the chooser picks up the pieces, joins them together, and finds the full piece. Then you've got equivalent fractions. You learned that if you do something to that cutter, double it, you got to double the chooser in order to keep up. So this is Mark signing off and I hope you've enjoyed your off-the-wall math.